but even if he does not. That's only five words in English and only three in the original Hebrew. But they're some of the most profound and challenging words in the whole of Scripture, I think. And they're words which have a relevance to the situation we find ourselves in, in ECM, at the moment. We have been through two years of COVID, with all the disruption to our lives and to our ministries that that has brought. Now, we live in a Europe that is once again at war. And our Ukrainian brothers and sisters are in the very centre of it. And while they experience the real danger they are under, the threat to their lives and the lives of their loved ones, all of us in ECM are affected. And it is right that we are affected. In Christ, we are one body. We are one family. When one hurts, we all hurt and we all suffer. Throughout the past two years, and again since war broke out in Ukraine, we have reminded ourselves, I'm sure, that our God is still on the throne, that he is almighty, that he is in control. And they are important truths to hold on to. The power of God to rescue and to save was a belief held by the men who uttered the words I started with. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego find themselves facing the anger of Nebuchadnezzar for being faithful to their God. And as they stand near the furnace which is being prepared for their execution, they state something that we believe as well. If we are thrown into the fiery furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. That's what they say. That is a wonderful statement of faith in the power of God to save. It is, though, immediately after this that they then say, but even if he does not. This takes the statement concerning God's power into, well, into a whole new area of faith. It makes it clear that God is God. And we are not. It says that God's purposes are always right. And it says that however hot and fierce the fire, we, his people, will remain faithful. Because that's really exactly what the three men go on to say. We want you to know, they say to Nebuchadnezzar, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image you have set up. It reminds us that to say that God is a powerful God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, is not easy. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego are still thrown into the furnace. God does not save them from the fire, but he is with them in the fire. So what brings that sort of faith? What allows these three men to make this, well, this shattering statement? It comes from knowing God. It comes from recognising that who God is remains true, whatever the circumstances we find ourselves in. But as I say, it's not easy. Nebuchadnezzar looks into the fire and sees not three men, but four. A fourth man, the angel of the Lord, sharing the men's suffering and their pain, walking with them, literally, in the fire, suffering with them and bringing them through the ordeal. I don't think we can read that. I don't think we can picture that scene without, in some way or another, thinking of our Saviour, the one who is described as a man of sorrows and who was acquainted with grief. A gospel song from 1946 comes to mind. It's, it was sung by Ernestine Washington. It has these lines. Where could I go? Oh, where could I go seeking a refuge for my soul, 
needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Once we have met Jesus, once we have got to know him, there is nowhere else for us to go. The words of the song come, I imagine, from John 6, verse 68. The context is somewhat different. People are leaving Jesus and he turns to his 12 disciples and he asks them, you don't want to leave me too, do you? There's a lot of pain in that question. Peter's reply is, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. To whom shall we go? There is no one else. There is nowhere else. In the midst of war and suffering, of worry and concern, of feelings of helplessness and impotency, of fear and apprehension, we will remain with Jesus. We will go to Jesus. Because we know that he is, in Peter's words, the Holy One of God. But we go even further, don't we? Paul, probably from prison, encourages a church which was started as a result of Paul being in prison to rejoice in the Lord always. Not to ignore the circumstances around, but to remember that there is always joy when we are in Christ. Joy in who Jesus is. Joy in simply knowing him. And knowing also, as Paul goes on to write, that the Lord is near. So our prayers are with our brothers and sisters in Ukraine as war goes on. In a very small way, all of us find ourselves walking with them in the fire. But we do so knowing that our God is able to save, that he is a great God. But that whatever happens, we have nowhere else to go but Jesus. Whatever happens, we have the joy of being in Christ. Whatever happens. We wish it to be known that we will serve the Lord.